Alright, here for round one, and we have won the die roll. Um, hmm. You know, I could see drawing first with this deck, especially since we have a lot of sweet things that we want to hit um, at the end game, but I think this format's fast enough that I want to be on the play. Ooh, and we're not going to mulligan this. I mean, we have the turn one wave. <laughs> we do need to hit another land here, just so that we can hit our three drops. But I think that we can put on enough early aggression, as long as he doesn't have like a Doom Traveler, that we can go ahead and take over. Whew, he did have a Plains, but no Doom Traveler, thankfully. Ooh, this could get a little bit awkward if we don't hit another land next turn. We have a bunch of four drops and three drops in our hand. That's unfortunate. Land? Eee, okay, well, that's not bad. Um, I'm going to Faithless Looting here, just in case we hit like a Mountain and a Geist Flame. Oh, so close. Alright, so what don't we need? I think I'm going to actually discard the Charm Breaker here. And a Scourged Egg Cultist. Um, no, that can't be right. I'm going to discard... Eh, maybe the Torture and the Kessig Wolf. Um, I know we have the Ghoul's Colors chant to buy it back, but don't think I can get rid of it. And I'm not going to attack here. I'm going to wait until I can two-for-one him. <clears throat> Especially since his humans only have one toughness. Like, if he has like, a skillful lunge, or sh skillful lunge or something to try to blow us out, we can Geist Flame it. Ooh, and that's a good Geist Flame target as well. All right. <laughs> oh, another nice one. Do need to hit some land here, though. So if I tack, I think he's obviously just going to block with his double humans. And I think I'm actually okay with that trade. Hmm. Like, basically in this game right now, I just want to get to the, uh, six mana, and then, like, we can take over with our bombs. The only thing you could have for these is, like, smite the monstrous. Especially in red, or rather, blue-white. Um, so I'm actually okay just face faithless looting here and passing the turn without attacking. Like, I do want to hit those lands, and I don't mind discarding, like, our three and four drops that we don't need. Okay, well, just definitely discarding the near Heath Stalker. And I th think the Kessig Wolf. I'd rather have the Wolf than the Skurz Dead Cultist. We'll go ahead and pass the turn now. Uh, I am going to need to Geist Flame this eventually, but if we can hit a, just any land next turn, we're just going to snap play the Blood Gift Demon. So he hits four. Okay, so it looks like he just, he's just going to go aggro, so I'm assuming he's going to play something that can deal with the Merciless Predator. Hopefully he doesn't just pass the turn, because that's suspect. Like, Bone to Ash, Dissipate, Frightful Delusion are all things that he could have if that were the case. Does not look like that, though. And we drew a land. So, yeah, with a white and a blue up, we do not have to worry about counter spells. We'll go ahead and play our bomb and make him deal with it. Uh, again, I'm not going to attack here. He just straight up trade for his two humans, and that's not worth it to me. Uh, to note, I do want to make it so I kill the Niblis with the Geist Flame when he doesn't have two mana available. Otherwise, he just trades it in for a 2 2 Homunculus. And let's see, we don't have any spells in our graveyard thus far, so. Like what we can start doing is, if we can hit a land, we can uh, start geist flaming stuff on his up or on our upkeep rather. Uh, that way we can uh, rebuy the geist flame every turn. So that would be pretty nice, especially since he has three creatures with one toughness on the board currently. I'm gonna assume he doesn't have the smite the monsters for the blood gift demon if he's in the tank this long. <laughs> All right, Abby Griffin, perfectly okay with this. Obviously going to target ourselves. One life is... Ooh, nice, nice, nice. Okay, so... Like, we do have the option of attacking with the Blood Gift Demon here. Um, and if he double blocks, we just Geist Flame the Niblis, and I think that's what I'm going to do. Because even if he does that, we still have another follow-up play in the uh, Ashmouth Hound. Okay, so he did not block. So I'll just go ahead and drop another Whammy on him. 
and then we can start doing the Geist Flame upkeep shenanigans. And we do have to worry about the uh, flyers, but we are going to take off one of them uh, during our next upkeep, so there's that. Alright, so he's going to attack in here just with the griffin. Most likely tapping down one of our guys. Alright, and I would like to draw the card. Let's see what we draw before we decide to Geist Flame or anything. <laughs> okay, so now we can either buy Fires of Undeath or the Geist Flame, but since the Geist Flame is going to cost less mana, we're going to go ahead and use that here. Rebuy that instead. So he's probably going to tap in response. He might be able to save it, or try to save it. But that's fine. We have so much gas right now that, you know, he's going to have a hard time doing anything. Like, best case for us, he just uses the uh, Stitcher's Apprentice. Well, I guess best case is him not using that ability, but he's probably just going to use the Stitcher to upgrade, or not even upgrade, just trade in his Niblis. We'll see what he does here, though. Like, here we have to just pretty much play it safe with him having this much mana up. Like, I don't want to attack into Rebuke or something, because we have a dominating presence just by, you know, using the Geist Flame or using the Fires of Undeath uh, every upkeep just to slowly demolish his board. And if we really want to, we can start, you know, shooting him. Slow clock, but a clock nonetheless. Well, maybe it isn't a slow clock. Like, we could be fiery using Fires of Undeath on him for three turns. Just upkeep Fires of Undeath. Uh, buy it back. End of turn Fires of Undeath. Oh, I guess it's going to take, like, four or five turns. But, hey, still a clock. Okay, so he does choose to tap our flyer. Sure. Charmbreaker's Devils gets the trigger. So he let it die which is a little bit concerning just because he could easily have a rebuke um, because of that I'm not going to attack with the charm breaker we have such a strong lock that I don't really need to but I'm, a, I'm fine attacking with the uh, predator here again we still have the geist flame and he should know about that Alright, so he's just going to take it, it looks like. Um, like I already cast a Geist Flame, so this is going to flip a, my Predator if I play a spell. But I am going to go ahead and play the Walking Corpse out. Leaving up mana to uh, Fires of Undeath and Geist Flame. Or one or the other, not both. Midnight Haunting. Okay, here I think I'm actually just going to use Fires on the Griffin. I can't afford him to... Uh, I can't let him have too many flyers on the board. Like, that's one of the only ways he's going to win. And the Griffin's the biggest threat at the moment. And that way, since he's tapped out, he can't use the Stitcher as well. Uh, now I'm not going to Geist Flame during upkeep, because now I rebuy the Fires of Undeath, which is slightly better. <laughs> Alright, so he attacks for two. Uh, to note, the option is always there to Blood Gift Demon him. Okay, so he's tapping out here. So that's actually really good for me. Like, actually, the plan is to make him lose a life and let him draw a card. That'll put him to uh, 8. And then I can attack with the Blood Gift Demon and uh, Fires and Geist Flame him. Or conversely now, Blood Blazing Torch, since I now have that. So attack with the demon, because he can't block. And he knows we have both of these, so no point showing him more information. And that'll be the game. Alrighty, got their game one on the back of our two bombs and uh, a bevy of removal. Um, so it looks like he has a lot of flyers. Unfortunate that we don't have a uh, one-eyed scarecrow. We could sideboard in the ward on the wall, which is actually decent against him. Uh, it helps us ramp into our big spells 
and uh, it holds off his flyers, which is the only thing we're really truly worried about. Um, since he's in blue-white, he doesn't have that much removal. Like, he could have, I guess, like, Fiend Hunter, stuff stuff like that, but nothing really that we have to worry about. So this just becomes like a sack of creature draw, too. I think I'm going to get rid of it here. Uh, as mentioned before, we already have enough sack outlets. Don't think there's anything much else we'd want to bring in. I mean, actually, Harvest Pyre's fine. Um, just because all of his creatures are pretty pretty weak on the defensive side like they have low toughness so we should be able to use both of our pyres uh, if we chose to but I think we'll leave it at this and we'll go ahead and submit all right back here for game two of round one of this Innistrad 8 for draft uh, opponent is opting to play first and mulligan mulliganing to six uh, we're gonna clearly keep our hand here and he's mulling to five. Okay, well, that's good for us. He has the first turn selfless Kathar. We'll go ahead and draw one of our vampires. Uh, we don't have really much way to interact with him this early until we get three mana. But, well, he's already got two cards in hand since he already mulled the five, so... The plan is just to wait for him to tap out and blow up the priest. Hopefully he plays something here. Alright, I'm good with that. Ooh, Reckless Waif. Nope. Just gonna blow up the Priest, though. Um, if I waited any longer, he could, you know, sack one of the Cathars to pump it up. Uh, he could have had Saving Grasp, but he obviously didn't. Wow, he's mono 1 and 2 drops. Jeez. Alright, so... We'll play the Cultist. And uh, next turn, we can play the Waif and, you know, shoot something, or we just play another Cultist. Conversely, if we draw land, we can play one of our one of our five drops, which we are in fact going to do. And the cultist is a human, so if we really needed to regenerate, which there isn't much way he can deal with it at this point, uh, we could do that. Sure, sacking a Kathar, I assume. Yeah, making a homunculus. All right, so he hit rebuke mana, but. We're not really worried about that since we have the uh, the cultist online. Um, here, I'm actually going to block the homunculus. If he has any trick, I'm just going to sack the cultist. Or if he blows up the Kathar, I'm perfectly okay with that. Because, like again, like I said before, we have the chant in hand and we have another backup cultist if we really need. So we'll see what happens. Like, either way, he has to use something... Uh, one of his resources to get rid of it. Yeah, okay, so he's sacking his Kathar. And I'll sack my human. I get a nice little two for one here. Unless he has like a faith shield. Yeah, then it is still two for one. And now I'm going to get be able to get a free hit in here. Uh, depleting him of another card in hand, which is... When you're on the mold of five on the play and you get card disadvantage... <laughs> It's pretty much game over. Alright, so... I'll take the homunculus. Regenerate my... Dude. And we'll attack in. Alright, so let's see what kind of card we can get out of him. Do 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 do. And I think I'm going to play the Stalker here next turn. Battleground Geist, okay, that's good. Uh, that's a lie, I'm not going to play the Stalker. I'm going to play the uh, Cultist plus the Reckless Waif. This allows me to uh, use the Cultist's ability next turn. And if I draw land, I can play the Stalker and uh, Cultist it. Uh, rebuying it with the Undying, so nice little synergy. Uh, I guess we had more humans than I thought, because <laughs> the Fiend of Shadows is actually an okay regenerator here. Alright, so just attacking him with a fiend again. Depleting him of another card in hand. See what we get. And a soul Caesar. Okay, that's pretty nice for us. Uh just gonna take play two spells here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just shoot the uh Stitcher's Apprentice. It's the only thing that he he can uh really interact with at this point. Yeah, so 
Like, he mulled the five. He had a pretty bad hand, and we just kind of got there. So, pretty easy round one. Uh, we'll see you guys for round two.